the other one is Cindy Sherman. Um, and there is a, um, a treatment of light and uh, formal composition, which reminded me a lot of surrealist photography. Um, and one of the things I have always thought about Cindy Sherman is that she went deep into surrealist photography and brought that into color. And there were some very interesting um, visual notes with fleshy-like composition that it seemed to, um, it, it, whether it was my, an illusion of you know, the light or you actually did bleed a little bit of color into these um, spots. It reminded me of um, when Sherman came out of her um, kind of twisted portraits of uh, famous paintings and people into this carved up bodies um, and constructed in doll-like fashion but married with literally meat. Um, it, you're, it, there's that, um, the, the visual suspense, um, the, takes an eeriness from, when you, you said Dali and um, from surrealism, but then somehow slams it into the, the present. Um, but I'm just curious if, if you had uh, come out of, uh, in some kind of conceptual way, um, still photography, uh, as, you, as you can see going into moving images. I mean, I know, our largest collection of books are of photography and uh, architecture. And so, but actually, Cindy Schirmer, although we know about her and some of her works, we're not authorities in any, in any way. Mm. But if you, when you say surrealist photography, of course, we're perfectly aware of all the precedents. <coughs> but perhaps and Molly Lee and uh, more than and Bellman, that more the originals than Cindy Sherman. Uh, yeah, like Bellman. Yes. Molly Lee, yeah. Bellman, and others. Yeah. And some right. of the Czech photographers from the 20s and 30s. That is not in color, by the way. Already. Benedict, please. Yeah, I, I would just like to, um, I would first of all like, like to thank you for the beautiful movies. Um, it was beautiful. Um, I, I, I'd like to hear more about your, your approach to, to the music, because um, I felt like, like the balance between the music and the, and the pictures were very different in the different pieces you presented to us. And um, you're, you've already talked now about um, the last piece, about that, that Stockhausen thing. And I would just like to hear how, how your approach was to the, to the other pieces, how, how that functions, those interactions. I, I mean, for us, the music's always first. I mean, there's, there's only one film in our life, I think, that's been, the music was done afterwards. We have to have the music, because it gives us the for want of a better word, a secret scenario, something that not to as assist the lack that we might bring to it, but that it, it's an inspiration. And also, there's, I think that the um, music pr proposes a greater dramaturgy than, say, a text. And there's actually, apart from the Walter, there's very little text in, in these films. They're almost entirely musical. I, I think we're more comfortable with, say, Ballet or animation films, but um, but it is a challenge to do dialogue, of course. One more, perhaps. <clears throat> One should add. Uh, Stephen was just starting to say that this was um, the Stockhausen film was the last. Uh, is shot on 35 millimeter. This is this is one thing, but we don't want to this discussion on digital and, and analog at the moment. But uh, the physicality uh, of your approach um, is definitely not getting through here. It's just a little quotation <laughs> which we have uh, in this DVD form and on this uh, extremely small. I had the pleasure to see. Uh, in absentia a few times in a real cinema, cinema scope, and this is something uh, of, uh, the, um, <clears throat> what you commented on also uh, on the time-space relations and so on, which is completely different uh, when you are uh, really part of that uh, physical presence of, of the movings and of the time-space relations and of course including this enormous uh, music, <clears throat> this kind of experience. 
gets unfortunately a little bit lost, and I fear that most of the people know about your films from uh, YouTube. Uh, and, uh, well, I mean, you know, this is a big step. And I know that the, I mean that that's been a real handicap because in a sense, you when you're working with puppets which might be that scale, one of the great riches is that ultimately you're shooting on 35 and you blow it up to a giant cinema. And there you you abolish scale, but then it will, when it's reduced to being watched on DVD, on TVs, the puppets come back down to slightly smaller. And, and I think something gets lost, they're, they're, rather than seeing it up large. And it, you, know, you see a pencil point, which is you know, like this. It, it makes, you see a, then you see a pencil point like you've never seen it before. Mm -hmm. Then it means something. Um, you know. was, were the pencil points also an homage? I'm sure. Yeah, I guess I'm just. I guess. Well, like to the to the couple. Um, um, well, you mean to Walzer? No, to um, uh, Alexei and. Uh, uh, oh. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, so, yeah, subconsciously. <laughs> I guess I just wanted to see that. Yeah. Oh, right, 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 now we're gonna rub it out, and it's gonna be. Well, originally, the, the title for an absentia, we, we were going to borrow something from Walser, which was what, from the pencil fields. But the, um, I mean, the translation from the, the German, and um, the, the, the man who produced the film hated it, and he said, he proposed in absentia, we, oh, I mean, we like Latin, so he said yes. <laughs> <laughs> it makes it feel, you know, more, more powerful. <laughs> Less illustrious. One more? No? Nope.